rapper, and I just told him, I said, man, you're freaking A-Rock. Won't you start playing like it and acting like it? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bronx Backstories. I'm Sweeney Murdy, joined today by Gary Sheffield, who played for the Yankees for three years in the early 2000s. Stellar career, over 500 home runs. Chef, it's nice to see you again. How you doing? Good, man. How you doing, man? Long time no see. That's it. I can, I always say that you were one of my favorite guys to cover. I always felt that you gave honest answers about what was happening and what you felt. And maybe the circumstances changed a little bit, but what you were feeling in that moment, you always told us up front and you weren't hiding from it. Well, I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, I've always been a guy that live in truth. And uh, a lot of times, you know, people put spins on it to make it juicier or uh, downplay it somewhat. But uh, I've always been a straight shooter. One of the interactions that I really vividly remember talking to you about in the moment that it happened, your first year with the Yankees, 2004, also Alex Rodriguez, his first year with the Yankees. Late in August, the Yankees are in Toronto, and one of the ongoing storylines with Alex Rodriguez is coming through in the clutch, driving in runs late, runners in scoring position, that kind of thing. And it's in batting practice, and you're in his hitting group, and you had some advice to Alex to just kind of let it go. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I recall Alex coming to New York. Um, I remember me and Derek Jeter was training at the Himes facility, the Yankees complex, and, um, and Soriano was there as well. And we was training together, and, and uh, I was the big free agent signing. And next thing you know, Soriano is leaving the, um, the practice and saying that he just got traded for Alex Rodriguez. And I was like, wow, <laughs> me and uh, Soriano was teammates for two days of training. <laughs> so, so when we got Alex, I looked at Derek, I said, well, you know, based on what he brings to the table, I, I can pretty much guarantee you a championship this year because I was pretty much doing the same thing if I would came along. And so when Alice got there, he brought this class, this big old persona about, you know, he's the MVP, you know, he's this type of player. And you never know what a player is like until you play with them. And when I played with A-Rod, um, I always got the impression of, of him is that, you know, he wanted to be looked at as a superstar. And when you're on the Yankees, you know, you have to put that superstar status to the side and do what's best for the team. And I think that uh, he had a hard time with that at the beginning. And uh, he got off to a rough start and he had to produce because George Steinbrenner didn't mess around. It was all about production and win. And he struggled and, and I finally just got tired of it. And I just told him, I said, man, you're freaking A-Rod. Won't you start playing like it and acting like it? Joe Torre came to me and said, what are we going to do about your boy? And I said, well, the problem is the way you got this lineup. I said, you need to move Jeter to first and hit first and put A-Rod second. And he said, second? I said, yes. Put him in front of me. He'll eat very well. Just like that. <laughs> and he was like, well, you know, what are we going to do with the rest of the lineup at the back end? I said, man, we got the highest payroll and we got the, all these players in this lineup. You put A-Rod second, we're gonna win games. And when, and, and, um, when I said that to A-Rod, it seemed like it worked and he just took off from there. You know, he got a game-winning hit in that series in Toronto late in August. Mm -hmm. And then he hit very well over the course of the last five or six weeks, especially runners in scoring position. It seemed like two things, Chef, that you were the kind of guy who would say something and he was the kind of guy who needed to hear something. Yes, A-Rod is a great person. And I tell people this all the time. I get a lot of people want to know what A-Rod is like, and a lot of people have their opinions, good or bad. A-Rod is a guy that has to be pushed and in a certain way, but he he's driven for his baseball-wise, but he has to be pushed and challenged to be great. I think A-Rod wants to be liked by everyone, and that's a, that's a difficult thing to do when you come to New York because everybody's not going to like you. And so I think when he heard those words, it helped him relax a little bit. You know, you had come to New York with a World Series ring already in your pocket from the Marlins. Uh, mm -hmm. Alex waited a few more years. He finally got his in 2009. What was the disappointment in 2004 like for you, especially the way it happened? If you look at the first five games, you know, Boston was dead in the water. Uh, they had, they, they really didn't have a shot to, to win those games. And uh, 
we let them back in. But the one thing that I always remember about that, Joe Torre, uh, he basically told Mariano he wasn't pitching in a game um, that we wound up losing. And and then that that's that kind of just built up to the next game when he came in and gave it up again. And so that was kind of that was kind of deflating for the team because we knew they had the better pitching staff. They had Pedro and Kurt Schilling. All we was doing was eliminating them by beating them the first two two games, and they would never be able to go back to them. And so that was our our mindset. And but but the way the series played out, you know, we just got off to a bad start on the mound, and and, and we couldn't recover. Chef, you're full of great stories. Hope we'll get a chance to share some more again one day. But uh, I want to thank you for taking some time out here. Thanks for joining us on Bronx Backstories. I'm Sweeney Merton.